Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice equation. We've done a similar problem before, you'll probably remember we had z squared equals the absolute value of z plus 1. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't seen that one yet. So in this equation we're supposed to solve for z and we have a complex number whose square equals its absolute value. Is this at all possible? Let's find out. First of all, I just want to say thank you. Uh, this problem was actually suggested by Michael James, actually. And he said that he stumbled upon this problem and he solved for it and he wanted to see my approach. So here we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can solve this problem. So we have z squared is absolute value of z. And let's see how we can solve this. Great. So with many other problems about complex numbers, especially at the basic, maybe to medium level, we can pretty much replace z with a plus bi and then solve the resulting equation. And a lot of times we get two equations from a single equation because there's a real part and an imaginary part, and then we solve for it, that turns into a system of equations, so on and so forth. Okay, anyways, a lot of things can be said, but let's get to work. So in this problem, we're going to do the same thing, replace z with a plus bi, that'll be squared, and then we're going to take the absolute value of z, which is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared, all right? That's the absolute value, remember? That's also the um, square root of the z times z bar. So now, how do we solve this? You'll remember from uh, yesterday's video, I think we done it yesterday, right? We squared this again, so we got a squared minus b squared, plus 2abi, pretty close to a plus b with a minus sign because that comes from uh, i squared is negative 1. And then, of course, on the right-hand side, we do have a radical. Uh-oh, that's okay. Now, you can put everything on the same side if you want, but I'm going to leave it as is because it's better that way. Okay? I think. My opinion. So, we do have complex numbers on both sides. This is the real part on the left-hand side, and this is the real part on the right hand side. What is the imaginary part? This is the imaginary part and the imaginary part doesn't exist so it's zero in this case. Make sense? So I'm just going to add a zero i because you can always add that when there is no i in the equation. Now we can compare the real parts with real parts and the imaginary parts with imaginary parts. Come up with a system and then solve that system find a and b. Those are going to give us the values of z. Let's see how many solutions are there. Make a guess at this point. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and write down our system. a squared minus b squared is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared. That's my first equation. My second equation is actually awesome because that's 2ab equals 0. But doesn't that mean ab equals 0? Yes. So since the second one is actually simpler, I'm going to start with that one, just like the other problem we did the other day. So from here we get a equals 0 or b equals 0. Great. We're going to check each case. So let's call this case number 1 and let's call this case number 2. Case number 1, a is equal to 0. Obviously we do have another equation, this one, which we're going to use with a equals 0. If a is equal to 0, this gives us negative b squared, uh-oh, that doesn't look good, equals the square root of a squared, which is 0, plus b squared. Awesome. So how do you solve something like this? Well, one thing you can do is, first of all, remember that negative b squared is less than or equal to 0. If b is equal to 0, it's 0. So b equals 0 seems to satisfy this equation, but we already know that from the second case. But let's go and leave it at that. b equals 0 is going to work with a equals 0, right? Okay. Notice that 0, 0 satisfies the system. But if b does not equal 0, then b squared is going to be positive, negative b squared is going to be less than 0. So this is going to be negative, but this can't be negative because b is real. Do you see what I'm saying? But if you really wanted to go about solving this equation, pretend you don't know anything about it, square both sides, you're going to get b to the fourth power equals b squared. And now put the b squared on the left and then um, factor out. And then from here, you're going to get b equals 0 b equals 1, and b equals negative 1. But because you squared both sides with radical equations, that's what happens most of the time, you introduce 
extra or extraneous solutions. And obviously, b equals 1 does not work because notice that square root of 1 does not equal negative 1 unless b is a complex number, of course, but b must be real, so b equals 0 is the only result. And you could easily get that without squaring both sides. Anyways, so a equals 0 implies b equals 0, that's it. Let's take a look at b equals 0. Does that mean b equals 0 only imp implies a equals 0? Not necessarily, because if p implies q, that doesn't necessarily mean q implies p. Okay, a little bit of logic there. So, if p is equal to 0, I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the first equation. What's the first equation? a squared minus b squared equals the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is the absolute value, right? Awesome. Now, if p is 0, we get a squared. And then on the right-hand side, we get the square root of a squared. It's kind of interesting, right? What's the square root of a squared? It's the absolute value of a. So you got to be a little careful here because you can first, I think it's safer to write it as absolute value of a. And by the way, a is real, so we're talking about a real absolute value. So there are two results. If a is positive, if a is positive, then absolute value of a is going to be positive a. So a squared equals a is the solution. If you take out the a as a factor, you get two solutions. Either a is 0 or a is 1. We said that a, if a is positive, so a equals 1 is definitely going to work. But what about a equals 0? Yes, that's going to work too because notice that 0 satisfies this. So that gives us b equals 0, a equals 0, but we already have that. So we don't have to repeat ourselves. With the second case, if a is less than 0, by the way, I didn't include a equals 0, but I could probably just put a little equal sign there. There you go. Problem fixed. Now, if a is less than 0, then a squared is going to equal negative a because that's what the absolute value equals. And then that's going to give me a squared plus a equals 0, which means a times a plus 1 equals 0. a equals 0 is not going to work because a must be less than 0. This means a is negative 1 is the only solution. And that's actually less than 0, so uh, that'll count. Great, let's put together what we have. So first of all, we had a equals 0, b equals 0. Let's go ahead and write it down as an ordered pair, and then we can kind of put this in the complex number form. Okay, what about the second case? b equals 0 gave us a equals 0 again. We don't have to worry about it. Let's go ahead and focus on the other solutions like this one and that one. So b equals 0 gave us a equals 1. That means 1 comma 0 is a solution as well. And then negative 1 comma 0 is also a solution. Let's go ahead and write each of these as complex numbers. This is just z sub 1 equals 0. This is z sub 2 equals 1. And z sub 3 equals negative 1. Wait a minute. Where are the i's? There are no i's. We took out the i's because these are all real numbers. Okay, what is going on here? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick, and then hopefully that'll make it clear. So z squared is the absolute value of z. Remember, absolute value of z is a real number, right? With a special r. So that means z squared is a real number. Does that mean z is a real number? Maybe. If z squared is real, there are two possibilities. If z squared is real, either z is real, which we already found, 0, 1, and negative 1, right? Those are the real deals. And the other case is z could be pure imaginary or just imaginary like some constant times i. Uh, let's just call that bi. And in which case, when you square the i, it's going to give you a negative 1, which is going to give you a real number. So if you square an imaginary number like i, you're going to get a real number. But if z is equal to bi, be careful about that. Be careful about that. Because the square is going to be negative b squared. And the absolute value is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. Which, actually, no. That's not the case. The absolute value of bi is just going to be b. And is this going to give us any solution? Let's go ahead and find out. Maybe it will, right? Who knows? b squared plus b is equal to 0. And then from here, oh, by the way, another thing to keep in mind in this case, b must be less than 0. Because you want b squared, i squared, you want z squared to be greater than or equal to 0, right? z squared must be greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, negative b squared must be greater than or equal to 0. But that's not possible unless b is equal to 0. Which means you can have this case, you can only have this case. And if z is real, you can just solve this equation for real numbers. And guess what? You're going to get the following solutions.
And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.